For week one, I've just been researching about force and the different forms of forces. For example, tension, compression, and etc. And so I'm just going to show you a little bit of my research with um, some a demonstration. Okay, so I'm just going to be sharing a little bit about forces and what I've learned about components of a billy cup. So the scientific definition of force is basically a push or a pull. For example, when, when you're doing your homework, you exert a pencil or a pen on the paper and either push or pull it across the paper. So that is an example of force. Another example is when your car breaks down, so obviously it's not moving. Okay, And so two people are on, are on the same side of the car and they're trying to pull it to the nearest petrol station. So they pull with the same amount of force, so in other words, the same amount of strength, in the same direction. Obviously, the car will move in that direction, and with fast movement, obviously, because with the two forces um, together, added together, it does create fast movement. So a demonstration of this is just this. So when, um, let's put it here. Here's a demonstration. So here are the two people. So here's a demonstration of the billy cut that I built. So two people pushing the same amount of force. See, that's fast movement. Okay. Another example is with the car example again. Two people on either side of the car. So either side like this. Okay. And they're pushing in the opposite directions with the same amount of force. Now, let's see what happens. It doesn't move. Okay? So if it was to move in that direction, well, it's not possible because there's someone pushing in this direction. Okay? So because we're pushing, it's like, it's compressed, pretty much. So it's not going to move at all. Another example, the car example again, is um, two people on either side again. But this person is pushing with more force than this person. So let's just see what happens. I'll just go this way. So obviously the car will move in this direction because more force is being pushed into that direction. Okay? But it's not going that fast because there's still someone pushing back in this direction. Okay? So it's sort of slowing it down but not stopping it fully. Okay, so there's just some examples of force. Okay, I have been learning about tension and compression as well and all the different forms of forces. Okay, um, week one, so obviously I have been researching. I also have been fortunate enough to finish my billy cut. Okay, so I'll just go through everything. So here's a top view. Okay, there's a side. Bottom, front, and back. Okay, so this is just a quirky touch. Okay, it's just made out of cardboard and it just said I painted it black and then I painted over top of that 54 flame. Okay, so just that was just a quirky touch and I rested it how I glued it down was I glued these little foot rests down. These are foot rests that I actually got from a mouse trap. So I just glued them down on top of these paddle pop sticks that I painted red, then glued down onto this base, which was actually wood, like the colour of wood, and I painted black. So from the painted black base, I stuck on these red paddle pop sticks that I painted. Then from there, I glued on these, these foot rests with super glue and then I cut out this, the cardboard, and then just laid it on top of the foot rest, but I actually put super glue on top of the foot rest so that it would stick. And so that obviously created a slanted shape. Okay? And so this is also I just stacked this is just the seat, which is also made of paper pop sticks. And so I also got some rope and I just used this as a seat belt. Okay, and so I just attached it to the back. So yeah, that's a seatbelt. And then underneath here, 
This is just some wood that I nailed down, as you can see, three times. I nailed that down as the axle, okay? And then I got some, I got a rod and some wheels from a toy truck. So obviously there are two rods, okay? And so I got two rods and I nailed them down, if you can see. So I sort of like overlapped them, okay? But before I, um, and so yeah, and so then, um, after that, I nailed, as you can see, there's rope here, white rope. So what I did was I attached it to the rod. Well, not really attached it, but, you know, sort of like connected it to the rod. And so here's the steer, so when, here's the seat. So the steering, so this is basically for the steering and for brakes. So let's just say the person pulls in that direction. The car will see the wheels like a turning. Okay. Okay, so which you pull it in whichever direction and the rod will get that signal. So therefore the wheels will facilitate in that direction. Okay. And also if you pull it, it sort of breaks the wheels or the rod. So the rod will not be able to facilitate. So it won't rotate. And so therefore the wheels won't get a signal to facilitate. So therefore the wheels will not move. And so it obviously breaks it. Or stops it pretty much. And so that's what I've been doing. Two. For, week two. Um, for week two I've just been doing some sketching of my billy cart. So my billy cart now looks like this. This is the final product. So this is a top view. I'll just go through this. This is the steering thing, so it's attached to the rod, so when the rider pulls it in, let's just say, this direction, the rod will get that signal, so the wheels, because they're attached to the rod, will move in that direction. And also when you pull it, it stops the brake from moving, so the, the rod is very stiff and stable, so therefore it is unable to rotate. So the wheels obviously stop and it bra it breaks it, like stops the car from moving. This is just um, a seatbelt that I've used out of um, rope and I've just attached it to the back there. Okay. So these are just some painted red paddle pop sticks as well. And same with this. And so this is a seat and this is just the backrest. And this is just for a quirky little touch. This and just says 54 flame. And then here's some footrests just to allow the rider comfort. Okay. So here's the bottom view. Here are the two rods. Okay. Here are the wheels. I just got these wheels from a toy truck. And I just pulled the truck apart and just got the wheels and the rod. And so here's some wood, and if you can see, it's just nailed down there. So yeah, I've be just been sketching it, um, and the purpose, I've been sketching top views, side views, bottom views, front views, and back views. Okay, and so I, I've done my sketching 3D, so it allows it, like instead of just a flat, instead of just a flat um, product on a piece of paper, um, if you make it 3D, it makes it look a, a lot more professional and a lot more like a diagram that is in, of better standard. So I've just been doing top view, side view, bottom view, front view and back view. And I've just labelled some bits and I wrote... So, for example, this is the rod slash shaft, and I just wrote what the rod, what a rod is, and a shaft. And so I just did that for each one. And so yeah, so that's what I've been doing for week three. two. Week three, I've just been thinking of some ideas for what I can write in my speech, and so I've sort of set it out in like because it says. Um, you have to show your steps um, of the of the process of making the billy cart. I just wrote all the steps 
I actually wrote these steps as I was going along, making the billy cart in week one. And so I just did that. And because you also have to say why and how. Um, so what I did was, firstly, let's just say an example. I did number one, research. So that was the first step. And then here I wrote why and then I wrote how I researched. Okay, and so I did that for each step. Okay, and so when I come to week four and start writing my speech, um, I'm going to be prepared and I'm going to know what I'm going to write. And I've also made a little thing here. So I've just been fiddling around with it. It just tells me for like 50 seconds I have to show my research in my speech. For one minute I have to show you the steps. For 30 seconds I have to explain why I did those steps. And for another 30 seconds I have to say how I did those steps. And for 20 seconds I say what I would have done differently if I had the opportunity to build a billy or do this assignment again. For week four and five, I've just been um, writing my speech, and so because I was pretty organised, and for week three, I actually, um, I actually wrote down how long I need to talk about things for. So for fifty seconds, I need to share my research, and for a minute, I need to show my steps, and for thirty seconds, I need to say why I did each step. Because I did that, and I was pre I got pretty organised. It's been a lot easier to write the speech. And also because I was taking notes from Miss McGogan when she was explaining what you need to include. And so I've taken those notes and it actually has benefited it has benefited benefited um like when I have started writing my speech. So that is really good. And so now I've finished writing my speech. And so I just show and present um all the information and research that I got from forces and like the different forms of forces and like components of a billy card and I show each step of the building process um, of making the billy card and why I did each step and how I did it and at the end I just say um, things that didn't actually go as planned and so yeah six Week six, I've just been practicing my speech over, over and over again so that um, I will memorise it when I come to presenting my speech in front of the class and Miss McGurgan. And um, also so I will have good eye contact and the audience will be more attached and connected to the speech because eye contact is a very important part of um, well, presenting a speech. And so also um, I've been practicing it over and over again just so I get a better understanding and some knowledge on um, like what I've done. And so if she asks me any questions, I will be able to answer the questions confident confidently.